what is going on everyone hope you all are doing well and in this video i'm going to talk about a stock that i've only spoken about once and that is carparts.com so i want to talk about what they do as a company and share my thoughts on their earnings report and conference call but i don't want to waste your time so let's go ahead and dive right in so carparts is a company who doesn't use brick and mortar to sell their products but does everything online they sell all kinds of auto parts for car repair maintenance collision and accessories for competitive prices and this is only the start for this company when we look at the industry they do have some solid competitors like AutoZone and O'Reilly, but there's still plenty of space in the auto parts sector for all these companies to thrive. The total addressable market, or TAM for carparts.com, is about $300 billion, and they are less than 1% of that amount. However, when we look at these companies, there's a significant difference between car parts and their competitors. Especially after Amazon, we have figured out that companies do not need physical locations to sell their products. And when you think about it, if something goes wrong with the car, you may not be able to actually drive it to the location to get the part that you need. Given the times, there's going to be a change in consumer spending, especially if we are in a recession or are going into one. But the reality is that no matter the current financial situation, cars will continue to need repairs and I think this protects them from anything that could happen within the economy because even though there were stimulus checks to get auto repairs last year we still saw a double digit growth this year and the management team has done a great job orchestrating an incredible business model First, not having physical locations allows the company to have lower expenses because they have less workers that need to be paid and facilities that need to be kept up, which reduces supply chain costs. Second, their strategy allows them to send parts directly to consumers, and this could apply for auto repair shops or individuals working on their vehicles. And third, their warehouses are in prime locations, so they will be able to send their parts in a couple of days. But before we dive into the earnings report, let's talk about the price action. Car parts hit an all-time low of $5.90 Back on April 29th but since then the stock went on a solid run to over nine dollars now the stock has fallen back under eight dollars so is this a time to start buying well I will share that right after I talk about the earnings report and conference call so make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video in June of last year this company was twenty dollars a share and right now as of recording this video car parts has a market cap just under four hundred million dollars but let's go ahead and talk about the actual numbers from this company for the past quarter when we look at their revenues they generated hundred seventy six million dollars which is a 12% year-over-year revenue growth. Analysts expected them to be just under $176 million, so they basically were in line with expectations. Now, as a growth company, some people may say that 12% is not great. But when we consider the different sectors, some are moving faster than others. If we look at a company like O'Reilly, for example, they grew only 6% year over year. So this is why it is important to look at the competitors in the industry and not what other sectors have for growth rates. This growth is exceeding their competitors, which means that they are picking up greater market share. And when we look at the current revenues and their total addressable market, which is starting to grow even more, they have put themselves in a great position to expand for probably another decade. Now, here are some things to keep in mind when when it comes to their growth. Not only have they had 10 consecutive quarters of double digit growth, but over the past two years, they have had 44% revenue growth. And when you consider the fact that many people had so much stimulus this time last year to where they could do all these repairs and upgrades to have double digit growth the following year is impressive in my opinion. Now let's go to a metric that I'm always paying close attention to for any company, and that is adjusted EBITDA. They had positive adjusted EBITDA reaching $8.3 million. Now this goes to show that their current business can continue to be profitable. And as they continue to grow, this number will also continue to grow. Now it is important to know that even though they had the same amount of adjusted EBITDA the year before, they had to fight through high inflation, but also they funded a new distribution center in Jacksonville, Florida, where they will be able to deliver more parts faster. But not only did they have positive adjusted EBITDA, they also had positive net income, growing to $4.1 million. This gives them an EPS of seven cents a share. And I have said this numerous times, that large funds are looking for profitable companies. And I think that it is only a matter of time before car parts really gets on many investors' radars. Analysts expected them to lose three cents a share, so this is a great beat. This is also the second positive EPS quarter in a row. So I'm really looking for the company to continue on a strong trajectory. Looking at gross profits, they grew 16% to $62 million. Once again, proving that their business can flourish no matter the environment. 
So looking at gross margins, they grew 120 basis points to 35.1%. Now, what I think is important is that this growth came from them navigating freight costs and using their data analytics to determine what are the best prices to sell their products. In their conference call, the team said, we continue to leverage our data science team to basically optimize for price, as well as leaning on vertically integrated supply chain. And this is a big reason why I think they have increased their inventories. This allows them to not sell out of items and reduce sales because they were prepared. They almost have an entire quarter's worth of supply. So if supply chain issues did all of a sudden continue, they would have enough to almost get them through Q3. But this, plus their profitable growth, is a major reason why they are able to have such a low amount of cash. With $163 million in their inventory, they only have $15 million in cash. However, the team believes that they are in a position where they will not need to use capital markets like dilution or other debts for their operations. And a major reason for this is that they have grown their credit facility with JP Morgan Chase from $75 million to $150 million in their five-year agreement. Now, if we were to look at the current economy, how many banks would want to double the amount of credit given to their customers? Not many. And so for JP Morgan to trust car parts to extend and grow their credit facility is a nice sign for investors, not only because of their capital position, but also for the continued growth of their business as a whole. The next thing I want to focus on is their recent launch of their do it for me initiative. Now I think that this is the cherry on the top and could be a game changer if the company is able to execute on this business segment. I'm really excited about this new part of the business because they will work with other repair shops to get the right parts sent to the best place for the lowest price. I mean, think about it this way. The company is basically the middleman to send their most competitive price products to the best overall repairman. For many people, they rely on outside help to complete their repairs or maintenance work. And Carparts has already stated that they have completed hundreds of successful bookings. Granted, this is only live in certain test markets, but from what we are seeing, this could be a successful business moving forward. Now, there is one thing that they said that I think is important, and that is with this newly built functionality, some of the customers have the option to book an appointment with a certain mechanic of their choice directly on carparts.com with full transparency of the installation price. This enables them to basically be a one-stop shop to order parts, but also have a local mechanic already available for the repairs. But for car parts, they don't need to pay for the mechanics, so that means less expenses. Plus, they get to grow their brand awareness with the shops that they are currently working with. And in order to grow their total addressable market and get repeat customers, they need to be able to build more connections with stores that work with their current customers. The Do It For Me initiative will do just that, not only sending new parts to customers, but connecting customers with their auto repair clients. This is definitely going to be one of the most important things I'll pay attention to toward the end of the year. It is from projects like these where I believe an acceleration in revenue will come from. Now it is also important to note that the team doesn't expect this segment to really be meaningful toward revenues yet, but I think that they have the right approach. Rather than just doing a grand opening for this side of the business, they want to take their time and really focus on the customer experience and reviews before they launch it elsewhere. I think this is extremely important for the following reasons. First, the customer experience and reviews are always on the top priorities for a business because not only does it help retain customers, but it also attracts new ones. I mean, can you imagine if iPhones received a three out of five stars or worse? Reviews play a huge role for any kind of customer, whether they are returning or not. But secondly, as CarParts continues to show how strong of a segment this could be, their marketing will be basically more on evidence rather than trying to persuade someone how how good the product is. If the business works well and they have solid reviews, then that will bring in more customers. And I think word of mouth could be a huge piece of this business. I mean, how often do you hear people talking about getting their cars repaired? If this business model works as well as they've been saying, then this could draw a whole bunch of people because when it comes to car repairs, it is extremely stressful. And this product cuts right through that. Personally, I would much rather than build a strong base of good reviews to attract more customers in the long run than do a massive marketing campaign to get a whole bunch of customers in the short term. And as long as car parts continues to execute on this part of the business, this adds a whole new sector to their total addressable market that isn't cost intensive. So I'm going to pay close attention to the development of this business over the next few quarters. And speaking of the next quarters, here are going to be some things that the company is expecting for the remainder of the year. First is they are confident to continue to have profitable growth. I cannot say it enough how important this is for a company during a recession or 
we're just in a recessionary environment in general. Even if analysts don't see this company during this time, their track record is going to prove that no matter the environment, they are going to be able to thrive. And this makes this company not only an attractive company when things go well, but it is also a safety stock, especially given their needs-based products. The second thing they are expecting to see for the back half of the year is their gross margins to remain steady. And this is a big one in my opinion, because not only was the company able to grow their gross margins year over year, but they were able to fight off many of the supply chain issues that other companies were struggling with. And because they continue to be more and more vertically integrated, this company has put themselves in a fantastic position to maintain solid gross margins, not only for the rest of the year, but for the foreseeable future. The last piece that they mentioned is that their inflation costs will not severely impact their expenses. Now this does go back to being fully integrated, but because they are ahead of the curve when it comes to their high amount of inventory, they will not be as impacted as other companies if we continue to see high amounts of inflation over the next quarter. The last thing that I wanna talk about is the management team's view on staffing. They are still hiring while other tech companies are letting people go. So what this tells me is that while other companies are focusing on staying afloat when it comes to their overall margins and profitability, car parts can continue to maintain profitability while driving that double digit growth that we have seen from them over the past couple of quarters. Think about it. They have grown to become profitable during an economic downturn. So who knows what will happen when the environment changes and car parts moves forward with their do it for me initiative. But going back to staffing, the best part about where they are in this kind of market is that they can hire some great talent without needing to pay workers substantial amounts just to get them on board like we saw last year. Plus the kinds of people that the larger companies seem to be letting go are not just low level jobs. And this was something that was talked about during the conference call. The CEO even went as far to say, if this is going to be a commercial for carparts.com, I would go to carparts.com slash career. They don't really need to hire right now, but because they are profitable and they can focus more on their growth, the team is able to capitalize on these opportunities. And this is why I think that this company is going to be a phenomenal stock over time. In terms of what I'm doing, I'm continuing to add under $8. And if it falls below seven, then I will be even more aggressive. There are simply too many things that are working well with this company, like their profitable growth, market share expansion, and a game-changing innovative product that makes it difficult for me not to keep adding. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, hit that like button down below. It really means a lot for me in this channel. Plus, I would love to hear your thoughts on carparts.com. So feel free to mention them in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to sign up with Moomoo where you can get up to seven to 10 free stocks depending on how much you deposit to the platform. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified when new content comes out. Hope you all enjoyed the rest of your week and I'll see you in the next one.